Hello and welcome back to London Cycle Routes. Today I'll be showing you how to cycle from King's Cross in north central London to Stockwell in south London. This ride takes about 35 minutes and you can do the whole thing on quiet streets and protected cycle lanes. You could take the Victoria line between these two places but cycling is a good option as well and doesn't take very much longer. Especially when you take into account the long walk in the tunnels at King's Cross tube station. If you find this video useful or you just enjoy watching it then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel as I try to post new videos just like it every week. Alright let's get going. So we're starting on the Midland Road side of St Pancras station and the first stretch of the journey is here in this uh, lane that's shared with taxis. Fortunately the taxis are mostly stationary so you don't have to worry. On the right there is the British Library, that's the UK's copyright library. It has copies of every book produced in the United Kingdom and also Ireland interestingly. Um, and there you can find the Magna Carta, handwritten Beatles lyrics, um, basically everything. Um, we're just crossing Euston Road now and we did that on a green light there. We, there was a separate signal for us, the cars had a red light and we had a, a green light which is nice because it means that there won't be cars turning across us and it's all perfectly safe. Judd Street is a great way to get out of King's Cross and sort of head into central London. Um, it's generally traffic free, there isn't really any through traffic on here, there's no no effort to go really. Um, in a second we're going to be turning right down Lee Street, which is where those guys in front of us are indicating. In previous videos using this street I've actually continued straight on and turned right later, but a viewer helpfully pointed out that it's actually a banned turn even for cycles to turn right onto Tavistock Place. So we're going down Lee Street here, we turn left onto Marchmont Street and then we go right here to join the cycle lanes. And this is actually I think a nicer way to do it, the turn's a little bit less hairy and it is also crucially legal, which is a bonus. We, uh, we turn right here onto Tavistock Place and this has some really nice semi-protected cycle tracks. Uh, for a while in previous videos where I use this, these little uh, armadillos have been taken out, those little plastic things that protect us from the traffic or divide us from the traffic. They're, they're not that protective but they're definitely reassuring to have there. They've been put back in now which is nice. I think they were taken, back for, taken out briefly for uh, a bit of construction work and it is good to see them return. Um, this lane sort of cobbled together, various different styles. You can see on the right there, there's more of a curb protection. On this side, you get armadillos. It's generally a really nice ride, though. Nice and wide. And as you can see, we had no problem overtaking two cyclists who were riding two abreast, which is why you want to have uh, wide lanes like this. First, so you can ride two abreast in the first place, which is nice. And second, so you can overtake people who are riding two abreast, which is also very handy, especially if you're in a hurry and they're not. We wait at the lights here and we turn left onto Gower Street, the home of University College London, uh, a relatively well-known university. And uh, we have stepped cycle tracks here, so there's a sort of curb there protect, uh, protecting us from the rest of the street. The, the curb actually gives up quite a lot here. There's just a painted lane and then it goes back to a curb. I do wonder whether we could have any of those armadillos that we uh, had on that previous lane, maybe dotted along the, uh, the dotted lines here I don't really see why you wouldn't be able to have it here. While we're riding down this street it is worth admiring the uh, the Georgian architecture of the buildings and you can one easy way to tell whether something's Georgian or Victorian is to look at the doors and they've got that little semicircle above the doors and um, that's called a fan light and it's uh, there to sort of light the entrance way uh, to allow light in. That's very very common in uh, Georgian buildings but less common in Victorian so it's usually a pretty good giveaway which era that's from. Victorian buildings also tend to have a lot more ornamentation on them uh, generally than Georgian buildings. So for instance uh, you can see on the right there that red brick uh, one and also dead ahead of us that looks uh, a lot more Victorian than Georgian. Now um, for some reason this road was sort of closed. Um, I'm not really sure why those barriers were there um, but uh, that's how you do that junction. It's a little bit counterintuitive um, so hopefully that video has sorted you out. And you head down Endell Street. Now um, actually there was a on the on the quiet there was actually a traffic management scheme put in on these streets um, a couple of months ago. And as a result, Endell Street is extremely quiet. You can see we didn't run into any traffic. But as we cross the borough border into Westminster, into uh, into Bow Street, it does get a little bit more busy. Um, this traffic light is temporary, by the way, just because of the road works when this was filmed. So hopefully that won't be there when you come down here. Um, but yeah, you can see there's a little bit more traffic on here. It's basically okay now, and it is only a short bit of the ride. 
sometimes at theatre chucking out time or just before theatre this road can get very busy and as far as I can tell having ridden up and down it a lot it's actually interestingly because of the zebra crossing so there's one we went over just there and then one a few meters back and uh, basically those zebra crossings at theatre time are constantly in use so people are constantly crossing the road so even if there's not very much traffic it basically gets backed up obviously I'm not saying get rid of the zebras they're great um, but it's just something to be aware of um, it would definitely be better to uh, to remove the rest of the through traffic from that area because it doesn't seem like there's any reason for it um, now you wait at that light here and we come out and if you're you see there's two sets of traffic lights here um, that we've just gone through don't be tempted to skip those don't worry they are actually synced up so if the first one goes green you'll get a green on the second one too so there's no point in jumping ahead of the first one now we uh, <laughs> the light that we just went through we were very lucky to get a green because you can have a very long wait on there and we go down to the embankment and if you've ever cycled in London you'll know that the embankment is probably the best cycle way in London it's really really great uh, very nice and wide runs directly along the River Thames and of course you can see the London Eye, the uh, the big wheel on the left there. If you don't know London too well you might not know the name of the bridge that we're about to go under and that's because um, you can't actually drive over it so it's not a particularly common bridge, it's a railway bridge called Hungerford Bridge and it also has the Jubilee bridges either side of it so those are pedestrian walkway bridges. Unfortunately you can't cycle on them. Um, whenever I go uh, go down this bit I always for good reason mentioned that you should be very very careful cycling down here and that's because uh, with this work for the Thames Tideway Tunnel uh, which is a, a new sewer you can just see here there is not a pavement and uh, people tend to walk out on off the pavement onto the cycle path and they'll walk down it and there's also a blind corner so really it's a recipe for disaster so yeah do be very careful here um, I'm just going to improve the weather here I, it's a little bit too cloudy for my liking so um there we go. Um, <laughs> if you were wondering what happened there, that was because I uh, I in initially cycled this entire route, but unfortunately when I got to Westminster Bridge, which we're coming up to now, it was actually shut. So I've come back when it's open and uh, the weather's also a little bit better and there's also a few more people out on bikes. Um, Westminster Bridge is an interesting one. So it's just got new protected cycle lanes in the opposite direction. It's fantastic. That's on the other side of the road. On this side of the road, unfortunately, you'll see there are some problems. So we're just next to Big Ben, and that's a very popular tourist uh, spot. And people love taking photos of Big Ben, and they love taking photos of, of themselves next to Big Ben. And they uh, like to, you know, block the pavement. Um, me and these two guys on bikes ahead of us are ringing our bells pretty much constantly, and people aren't getting out of the way. Um, the guys in front are also shouting, this is a cycle lane, this is a cycle lane but still people aren't getting out of the way um, and also here an ice cream van is loading is enticing people to walk across the cycle lane um, that lane can get very very busy at commuter times and unfortunately um, the current situation is very dangerous getting rid of the ice cream van would probably be a bonus um, I don't know how that would happen because it's there all the time and nobody seems to move it on and it's probably making enough money to absorb the cost of any fines that it might get um, but to be honest, it probably would have been better to have a two-direction a two uh, lane on the other side of the bridge. Or frankly, if you look back, there was basically no motor traffic on the bridge at all. So the best thing to do might be to double the size of the pavement and just move the cycle lane over into the road. Unfortunately, there's basically no sign of that happening anytime soon because those lanes were just finished after a lot of wrangling. Um, and I know people work very, very hard to get them done, so I hate to criticise them, but yeah when there's a lot of tourists out that is an issue unfortunately now we're going under the railway here you could either go straight on here if you like or you can do what I've done and uh, go down Carlisle Lane for a little bit and take Virgil Street um, it's uh, they're both pretty much the same they're both uh, tunnels with very little traffic in them and they both put you out onto Hercules Street very classical themed names around here um, this lovely bollard um, arrangement coming up uh, that we've just gone through is uh, keeping the whole street quiet so it's uh, really uh, really quite pleasant and uh, we're coming up here and uh, make sure you look at the bike lights uh, which are just down here they'll go green before the main light and uh, we get a little bit of a head start over the other traffic not that we really need it because there isn't really any other traffic because of that bollard um, you go down this slightly superfluous um, bi-directional cycle track and do be quiet down here because there is a little bit of uh, light industry like Pimlico plumbers are based there um, and lots of 
vans coming and going during work hours so it is worth uh, keeping an eye out there and uh, just making sure um, don't whiz right over that uh, over that road that we just went over by the way when, as you go into Newport Street which has yet more vans um, because traffic could be whizzing down there so you want to look before you cross the road it'd be nice to have a sort of uh, zebra, uh, cycle zebra parallel crossing arrangement there um, so we're going to do something a little bit different today. Um, often I take uh, Cycleway 5, which is where that delivery rider went, but I'm actually going to turn left onto Black Prince Road. Um, this road is surprisingly quiet. It doesn't really have any uh, business being as quiet as it is. There's not really an obvious reason why it's quiet. It's not filtered. But uh, I often commute down here, and it is... Uh, yeah, it's always like this. There's very little traffic on it. Turn right onto Vauxhall Street, and again, this road is also very, very quiet. It also has a lovely high street. I really, really like this high street. On the right here, you get some shops. There's an internet cafe, which uh, does a uh, little cook breakfast as well, which is nice, and a few other shops to check out. And whenever I go there, there's always people talking to each other in the street, and I, I'm i convinced it's because there's not much traffic. Imagine if there was traffic thundering down that road. People wouldn't be stopping and talking to each other anywhere near as much, I think. Um, but everyone from the estates around here gets to use that central bit. It's actually pretty unusual to see uh, this many cars on it, by the way. We saw three cars, which isn't a lot. Um, we've got a green light here, which is nice. And uh, we cross Kennington Lane and we continue on Vauxhall Street. And we get this uh, bi-directional track, uh, sort of lightly segregated. Um, this is nice. Um, it's decent. The uh, the surfacing isn't, isn't perfect because the width is restricted by the fact that people don't want to ride on those cobbles. Uh, but generally it's uh, it's pretty good. You can see that down more roads. And we go down Kennington Oval there. That's the famous cricket ground on our left over those uh, those barriers. Um, the uh, the home of Surrey County Cricket Club since 1845. Now we cross the road here on this um, uh, Toucan Crossing. So you're allowed to cycle across it. Just a word of warning. When you do that in the other direction, there isn't really a place to wait um, there i mean you can wait in the cycle trap but if it's busy um it can be a little bit hairy and also the the spot where you are likely to position yourself to cross the road on a bike isn't next to a, uh, a push button and you do want to push the button on that hopefully somebody else will come along and push it or you can go to the push button and push it yourself it's one of those crossings that actually is triggered by a push button as far as i could tell um people who've taken the driving test should know this although not everyone does but the pedestrian crossings that have the zigzags going up to them those are the ones that I think are triggered by the button rather than uh, just on a rotation usually although it, it does vary but I think that's the case someone could correct me in the comments if you uh, know any better and um, we're just following cycleway 5 now we've picked up the route of cycleway 5 again uh, previously known as quietway 5 and uh, it weaves through the uh, the oval low traffic neighbourhood. This is a, a Lambeth Council low traffic neighbourhood. And as a result, there isn't really any traffic around these estates. And it's uh, all nice and quiet. And uh, it, it's great because uh, it basically just makes it very, very pleasant to ride around. Um, uh, this is probably a good time to say that if you uh, are enjoying this video, please don't forget to hit subscribe on the channel. And also hit the bell icon so you get the new videos. I try to post new videos every week. Don't always get around to it. But... Uh, you know, I think I think I do a pretty good job. Uh, let me know in the comments if there are any videos that you'd like to see, any routes that you'd like me to try out, um, or any infrastructure that maybe I'm not aware of that you think I should go and have a look at. Um, I have got plans to go down to, say, Kingston, check out South West London a little bit, a little bit more up in Walthamstow, Enfield. Um, I just need to get around to it. And also, I need sunny days when I've got free, <laughs> free time. Uh, I like to shoot the videos on sunny days because they look better, I think. And uh, I need free time because I need to actually go out and do it because it isn't my full-time job. Um, we're still following Cycleway 5 now. And we go down this uh, this very uh, fetching circus here, I think. Uh, I really like this. It's, um, it's nice. Uh, I like houses that are built like this. They look very pretty. Um, I can appreciate all sorts of architecture, I think. And uh, we continue down this uh, nice leafy street. And you cross this road. By the way, it would be great to have a... Uh, a parallel zebra crossing here I think there's not much traffic on the railway crossing but it would just give us priority over the uh, over the site and as soon as you go onto Larkhall Lane turn left down this path um, it's quite easy to miss but once you're on it it's pretty wide there are it is for pedestrians as well so um, make sure you are you know uh, slow don't ride too quickly um, on the left by the way you just got a glimpse of Stockwell bus garage which is a, uh, a brilliant Bruceless building if you like concretey buildings, unfortunately you can't see it in the video, but give it a Google, Stockwell Bus Garage. Um, and that is a clue that we are very close to our final destination, which is Stockwell. 
and we're coming up to the tube station on the right here. Um, if you wanted to go straight on, by the way, there is a uh, there is a bike light release that lets you across the junction, but unfortunately, no cycle lanes ahead. Uh, but that was it. Thanks very much, guys. We have made it from King's Cross to Stockwell. Took about 35 minutes. As I said at the beginning of the video, you can just get the Victoria line between these two places, but it's not quite as fun, is it? And it doesn't actually take very much longer, and it can be a bit of a slog in King's Cross Tube Station if you take the wrong turn. So, um, you know, it's definitely definitely cyclable. I think that's that's a good sign. When, when you can go end-to-end -end between two tube stations that are on the same line in more or less the same time as it takes uh, by bike that means you've got decent cycle infrastructure and this route is actually a pretty good one um, you know it's got protected tracks it goes through low traffic neighborhoods as well um, it's uh, generally good I pointed out you know a few minor quibbles criticisms things that need correcting on the way but generally I think that's a really good uh, good indication of the, the direction that infrastructure is going in London so that's really positive thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again next time don't forget to subscribe <laughs>